Is it me or was the media surprisingly silent about the fact that Julian Assange just got sentenced to 50 weeks in a high security UK prison for breaching his bail conditions? I don't think it's just me. Oh geez. Okay, I'm out. Got a meeting. For those of you who don't know me, I am Viva Fry, a Montreal litigator turned YouTuber. I do these things called vlogs, V-L-A-W-G-S, where we analyze and break down something that is going on in the news in terms that can be understood by lawyers and non-lawyers alike. Today we're doing a follow-up on the Julian Assange situation. He was just sentenced to 50 weeks in a high security UK prison for breach of his bail conditions. And for those of you who are new to the channel, I've done two other videos explaining the Julian Assange situation. I'll link them at the end of this video. And right now I'm off to a client meeting where we're going to be talking about commercial leases if you're new to the channel I've done a video on what to look at when you're reviewing a commercial lease I'll link that video right here if you have a few minutes of absolute boredom with nothing else to do Julian Assange was just sentenced to 50 weeks in a high security UK prison for breach of his bail conditions as relates to the Swedish rape charges that were brought against him in 2010 for which he ultimately sought refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy in 2012 where he stayed for seven years until he was kicked out of the Ecuadorian embassy in April of 2019 and arrested by British authorities. <sighs> That's a mouthful, but let's break it down and explain exactly what happened. Julian Assange, founder of WikiLeaks, published classified information relating to US military operations that was leaked to him by Chelsea Manning, at the time Bradley Manning. Coincidentally, at the very same time the United States was investigating the leaks to Julian Assange and the publication of the classified information on WikiLeaks, Swedish authorities opened up an investigation into Julian Assange for alleged rape that occurred in Sweden. In November 2010, Swedish authorities issued an international warrant for the arrest of Julian Assange. They sought the extradition of Julian Assange to Sweden to face those rape charges. In December 2010, Assange surrendered to the UK police but was released on bail conditions and this is what's going to come back in 2019. He was released on bail conditions while he fought the extradition to Sweden. For about two years, Julian Assange fought extradition to Sweden because he argued that the extradition to Sweden was just a pretext to extradite him to the US to face charges for publication of classified information or whatever. His fight against the extradition ultimately failed and instead of being extradited to Sweden, he sought refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy where he stayed for about seven years until he was kicked out in 2019. Now, I have not been able to verify the actual terms of Julian Assange's bail conditions, but we can explain in general terms what bail is. When someone is arrested and until such time as they can have their trial to find out if they're guilty or innocent, they're not always kept in jail during that interim period. In fact, more often than not, they are not kept in jail during that interim period. There have to be compelling reasons to keep an accused in prison until such time as they can have their trial to determine whether or not they are guilty of the charges of which they are accused. When the accused is released from prison, typically they are released on certain conditions, which we call bail conditions. There's a bail hearing that determines the conditions under which they will be released from prison. Typically, it involves posting a sum of money, abiding by certain terms and conditions, like you can't own or carry a firearm, you can't do drugs, you can't hang out with certain people, etc., etc. As far as I understand of Julian Assange's bail conditions, he had to post 340,000 pounds as security, meaning that if he defaulted on his bail conditions, he would forfeit that amount of security that was posted as his bail condition. And ultimately, when his fight against the extradition to Sweden failed, faced with the fact that he was going to have to be extradited to Sweden and, in his mind, subsequently would be extradited to the US to face charges on what he had done through WikiLeaks, he defaulted on his bail conditions and sought refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy where he stayed for seven years until he was kicked out. Once he was kicked out of the Ecuadorian embassy in 2019, he was promptly arrested by UK authorities for breaching his bail conditions. At the same time, the United States is seeking the extradition of Julian Assange. And in this entire story, just like that, overnight, with very little media coverage as far as I am concerned, Julian Assange was sentenced to 50 weeks in a high security prison for breaching his bail conditions. The situation to me is very reminiscent of what happened to Tommy Robinson, who was arrested on contempt of court charges. He had a hearing, was found guilty, and was sentenced to over a year in prison, all in the same afternoon. One big exception in that case was that a judge ordered a gag order on reporting on the proceedings against Tommy Robinson, which also, as a lawyer, just blew my mind. Now, one thing to understand, and I had to double check, the maximum sentence someone can get for breaching bail conditions in the United Kingdom is one year. Under Canadian criminal law, the maximum sentence someone can get for breaching bail conditions is two years. So the fact that Julian Assange got sentenced to 50 weeks in prison for breaching his bail conditions, that's four weeks less of the maximum allowed under UK law, is quite surprising. I'll just wait for this garbage truck to pass. 
there we go. Another very interesting thing to bear in mind is that Swedish authorities ultimately dropped the charges against Julian Assange in 2017. So Julian Assange now is being sentenced to virtually the maximum sentence possible for breaching bail conditions on charges that no longer exist against him. Important caveat to that, according to media reporting, for whatever that's worth to people out there, Swedish authorities did not drop the charges for absolute frivolity or lack of evidence. They dropped the charges because Julian Assange had been holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy for so long, it became impossible for them to further prosecute the accusations against him. And when they ended the investigation in 2017, they said it was because they could no longer take the investigation any further, given the fact that Julian Assange was seeking refuge in the Ecuadorian embassy. If and when they could ever get his hands on him, they might reopen the investigation. And apparently, recently, they announced that they might consider reopening the investigation of rape charges against Julian Assange. All that to say, however, is that Julian Assange was just sentenced to virtually the maximum penalty possible for breaching bail conditions on charges that are no longer pending against him. All the while, the United States is still seeking the extradition of Julian Assange to America to face the charges of illegally accessing a computer. As detailed in the indictment against him, check the video that I did on this. The link is going to be at the end of this video. Now, I don't know what the jurisprudence is in the United Kingdom as relates to sentencing for breaching bail conditions. I'll leave it to everyone in the aggregate knowledge of the internet to discuss in the comments section whether or not 50 weeks, the virtual maximum for breaching bail conditions under these types of circumstances, is shockingly high. As far as I understand of Canadian criminal law, which is not my expertise, expertise as a lawyer, if someone were to get the virtual maximum sentence for a first-time breach of bail conditions, it would be surprising. Another interesting tidbit of information, the judge who imposed the virtual maximum sentence possible against Julian Assange, in order to justify the severity of that sentence, cited the fact that Julian Assange, having been holed up in the Ecuadorian embassy, had cost UK taxpayers virtually 16 million pounds. For those of you who have yet to watch my two previous videos on the subject, the reason why it cost 16 million pounds to UK taxpayers, British police were stationed outside the Ecuadorian embassy for over three years just waiting for Julian Assange to leave the embassy so they could arrest him. That's why they incurred 16 million pounds of UK taxpayer dollars. For 24-7 surveillance of the Ecuadorian embassy, just in case Julian Assange decided to step foot off the embassy so they could then arrest him. They gave up this 24-7 three-year stakeout because of the costs. But now, because of those costs incurred for what many might consider to have been an absolute ridiculous three-year stakeout, the judge is using that against Julian Assange to sentence him to the virtual maximum sentence possible for breach of bail conditions. If one were to be cynical, one could think that from the perspective of the courts and the police, it's almost a shame they gave up the stakeout after three years, because if they had done it for the full seven years and incurred 70 million pounds in costs, then the judge could have used that against Julian Assange to sentence him to the absolute maximum possible for breach of bail conditions. Before I forget, if you like this content, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell so you know when I put up a new video. Share this channel with friends, family, parents, grandparents, pets if they have YouTube accounts. That's my go-to joke. Holy crab apples, I think I'm late for my meeting. Now you know your vlog, be sure to leave some comments down in the comment section. Let me know what you think. For our UK viewers out there, let me know in the comment section what you think of this sentence and how it fits into the overall landscape of British law. And for everyone else out there, now you know your vlog. Peace out. Boom!